Hello everyone. Today what I would like to do is give you a high level demonstration on how to use the V2R1 ZOSMF Configuration Assistant to create and install an IP set policy. After logging into the Configuration Assistant, you will be directed to the newly designed Welcome Panel where we will select and open our backup store for configuration. The backup store that we would like to use today is already selected for us, so all we have to do from here is click Open to open this backup store and we can start with configuring our IP set policy. So after opening the backup store, you'll see that we're now taken into the newly designed default panel, which has quite a bit of a design change compared to the V1R13 ZOSMF configuration assistant. So a couple of things that I want to point out. Some of the design changes you'll see is that now we have all of our reusable objects listed in the side-by-side -side tab view compared to the navigation tree that we had in the V1R13 ZOSMF configuration assistant. Across the top, you'll see that we now have breadcrumbs for easier navigation, and these will start to expand as we go throughout this demo. And at the bottom, you'll see that we now have a Home and a Save button that will always be displayed when on the default panels. So to start with our configuration, the first thing we need to do is verify that we're in the correct perspective. So across the top, you'll see that we have a Selected Perspective bar which has a drop down menu which lists all of the perspectives that we could configure with the ZOSMF configuration assistant. Since we're already in the IP set perspective, there's no changes need to be done here, so we can just get out of this menu and leave everything as is. So to start with our configuration, the first thing we need to do is create an image which represents the system or LPAR we want to configure, and we also need to create a stack pertaining to this image. So from here we can click Actions add GOS image. So we're now in the add GOS image panel. On this panel I will specify the name of the image that I want to create in the name field. So for this one I will call sys1. We also have an option to add a description which I will leave blank. We have the option to specify the ZOS release for the image that we are configuring which goes all the way back to V1R12 but I want to leave this at V2R1. And we also will leave this checkbox um, enabled, and this specifies that we will have dynamic, tone, dynamic tunnels, and we also have the default keyring database specified here. So we will leave this and click OK to complete our ZOS image. So you will now see a pop-up specifying that connectivity rules are configured for each TCP IP stack and you will need to create a new TCP IP stack for this new ZOS image. So we can click proceed from here. And this should take us directly to the add TCP IP stack panel. So on this panel, I'll specify the name of the stack that's associated with this image that I would like to configure an IP stack policy for. So for the stack name, I will specify TCP IP as an example for this demo. Again, we have an option to specify a description if we would like, but I will leave this blank. And at the bottom of the panel, you'll see that there's a checkbox to indicate that the stack will have dynamic tunnels. We will leave this checked and we will also select that we want to configure separate local identities for each IP address, which will be configured when we create our connectivity rules. So from here, all we have to do now is click OK. And we've now configured our TCP IP stack. So you'll now be presented with another pop-up saying that if you want to continue with the configuration, you should add a connectivity rule to this TCP IP stack. So we'll click Proceed. So if we click Proceed, it directs us uh, directly to the connectivity rule table for the stack, which you'll see in this label here. So after being directed here, you will be presented with another pop-up asking if you want to start the wizard to create a connectivity rule. So we'll click Proceed here. And this should automatically take us to the connectivity root wizard. So we've now added a new image, added a new stack, and we're now about to begin creating our new connectivity rule. So now for the connectivity root wizard. The first panel in the wizard is the welcome panel. So in the welcome panel, you will see that we need to indicate the connectivity rule type. Um, you could choose typical, which we will use for this demo. But you also have an option to select the reusable rule, which can be used across multiple stacks, 
or special case scenario but again we would like to use typical just for the case of this demo so I'll click next here and this will take us to the topology panel so here's where we would select whether this rule would be a filter only rule or if this rule would have specific IPsec tunnels and IPsec security levels so this is the one that we want here and below we also see a list of all the topology types that we could configure our IPsec rules for so I will leave this as host to host for the sake of this demo and click next so we're now on the data endpoints panel the data endpoints panel is used to specify data endpoints for this connectivity rule and also name this connectivity it also has the option for us to put a name to this connectivity rule so for the name I will specify demo CR for a demo connectivity rule for the local endpoint we have the option of selecting a pre-configured address group a specific IPv4 or IPv6 address subnet or range or a pre-configured local IP address name which we do not have any pre-configured address names so I want to configure a specific IPv4 address so I will specify 1.1.1.1 for this demo as for the local in data endpoint and for the remote data endpoint I will use 2.2.2.2 .2 for the remote data endpoint so that we will have an IPsec connection only between this specific connection so from here I will click next and we're now taken to the requirement map panel so now we're directed to the requirement map panel. Um, requirement maps are reusable objects that combine your traffic definitions with your security definitions. So on this panel we have the option to create a new requirement map, which you see here. We can also select an, an existing requirement map from the drop-down menu. Once I enable it, you see this drop-down menu um, display. And it lists all of the existing requirement maps that we have to choose from so we would like to use an existing requirement map and the requirement map that I would like to use is the trusted internet zone requirement map and also if you look below in the mappings table you'll see that we have a table that shows us exactly what traffic descriptors and security levels are configured for this pre-configured requirement map so we're done here we can click next so we're now on the local security endpoint panel. So the local security endpoint panel is used to specify an identity for the local endpoint. Since we're creating a, a dynamic tunnel, the local IC identity is required for IC negotiation. So on this panel we have two options. The first is to select the local identity type and specify a specific local identity. And the second option we have, we can use a pre-configured IC identity symbol but for the sake of this demo we will use a local identity type and specify our own local identity so here you will see we have a drop down which lists all of the different identities that we can use which I will use IP address for this demo and we can specify our own local identity which I would leave as 1.1.1.1 for the specific local address that we specified before so I would click next here now we're on the remote security endpoint panel. The remote security endpoint panel is used the same way as the local endpoint panel except for the remote except this is for the remote endpoint. So on this panel we also have an extra field to determine how we want to authenticate the IP peers. This field is listed here. So you have the option here for using a digital signature or specifying a pre-shared key but before we do that the first thing that we want to do is configure our remote identity type and our remote identity IP address so we do this the same as we did for the local endpoint leaving this as IP address and we're going to leave this specified as 2.2.2.2 .2 which we specify for the remote data endpoint and we also want to keep this as digital signature instead of pre-shared keys so I will leave that as is and we click next to go to the finish panel so lastly we're now on the finish panel here's where we have the option to specify the type of filter login that we want for the connectivity rule 
and also an option to configure any advanced settings that you prefer. So this is a high level demonstration. I won't go into the advanced settings, but I can sum up that the advanced settings is pretty much where you have the option to specify how to activate your dynamic tunnels, the encapsulation modes, your key exchange settings, and also acceptable certificate lo labels. So from here, I will click keep everything default and I can click finish here. And we've now created our new connectivity rule, which you see listed here on our connectivity rule panel for image sys1 stack TCP IP. So we can click, we can click close here. So we're now directed back to the systems table. So now our final step, we would like to transfer our IPSAC policy that we just created to our destination of our choice. So from here, we can click action install configuration file. So action install configuration file. And on this panel, you will see the configuration file that we created listed below for the specific stack that we are currently configuring. From here, we have the ability to install this configuration policy to our machine. But before we install, I would like to show you an example of how to view the actual configuration file that we created. So from here, I can click Actions, Show Configuration File. And once this pops up, this pretty much shows us exactly what we configured in the GUI in a flat file format. And this is the exact file that we're going to transfer to our destination. So you can view all of the specific details here. And you can click close to close this panel. So now we're ready to install. So in the action menu again, we can click action install. So the final step is to do an install. So on the install panel, you see that we have two options listed here. We have the save this save to this option, which we can save lo locally to the host that um, the CS is currently running on, and it also gives us the ability to FTP this policy to a destination of our choice. So for this demo, I will save this file locally, but just as an example, I can show you what happens when I click the FTP button. You'll see that these windows here are now enabled for you to configure the destination that you want to FTP this file to. And also below it gives you the option of specifying the uh, data transfer mode, default, passive, or active. But since we're not doing the FTP, we're going to leave that as is and go back to save to disk. So we can save this locally to our machine. So for the sake of this demo, I will save this policy to the slash temp directory. And after you specify your directory, you also need to specify the name of the policy and how you want this name in your directory. So I would name this demo policy. And lastly, the last thing left to do is to click go. And you will see that our file was saved successfully to the directory that we specify in the install file name. So after watching this demo, you have now learned how to create a new image, create a new stack, create a rule to help establish an IPsec tunnel, and install the policy on your machine. So I hope you find this video helpful in grasping the concept of the ZOSML Configuration Assistant, and hopefully you'll have a chance to explore all the other wonderful features that we have to offer with the Configuration Assistant. So thanks for watching.